In October 2011, the world's population reached 7 billion people. Our sustainability as a human race is very closely linked to the availability of and our relationship with energy. We use energy to grow our food, cook our meals, heat our homes, light our streets, to connect with one another, to run our hospitals, to learn and to sustain our own economic development. Access to energy is a key component of alleviating poverty and an indispensable element of sustainable human development. Without access to modern, commercial energy, poor countries can be trapped in a vicious cycle of poverty, social instability and underdevelopment. We used to share water with the cattle from the area and if it's dry, then it means no water at all. This kind of life is something that is happening all over the area. No clean water, no tap water. So life is just hard like that, but we are surviving. More than 75% of South Africa's energy is derived from coal, which makes the country one of the largest carbon emitters in Africa. As a country that straddles both a first and third world economy, South Africa's population is split into those that have and that have very little. It is also spread across a very large geographical area. Many of the poorer rural villages have absolutely no access to electricity. Entire villages and their inhabitants have never switched on a light, charged a cell phone, or worked on a computer, or accessed the internet. For the school, Vodacom has installed the solar energy of which we are running computers, we are running our photocopiers, at night to have enough light. Every morning, Tembelani sets out on the one hour long journey to school. Come rain or sunshine, this walk has to be taken in order for him to fulfill his dream. Education is key in him not only accessing, but also achieving a better life for him, and it is a sacrifice he's willing to make no matter what. His dream, however, is made all the more difficult as his school is in a rural area that has little access to electricity. Two of the country's biggest challenges are access to electricity and quality education. In November last year, a high school in Mvifreni received electricity for the first time. Unlike other communities, it did not receive power from its municipality, but rather from mobile operator Vodacom, who oversupplied solar power energy to one of its base stations located close to the community so that it could supply clean energy to the community. There were a number of needs in the community, primarily that there was a lack of power. There, was, there is no power in here. Also that water is generally secured through boreholes um, and in most cases the boreholes don't have pumps. There was a, the other hand pumped or there was a diesel generator at the school which would run for a couple of hours a day to, to, to pump water. Uh, and then we decided to oversupply the, the power via solar and uh, supply some of the excess power to the community. We normally use a generator to pump water but with the solar power we are now able to pump water we can flush our toilets, we can wash our school. Our educators who stay in the cottages are now able to get water with ease. Vodacom is South Africa's largest mobile operator and the people that work for the company are some of the brightest, most talented in the business. It is a company that cares about its people, its customers, and about the broader community in which it operates. It also cares about its shareholders and understands that by committing to finding solutions to some of the country's most serious social, environmental and governance challenges, it is also able to increase its bottom line. I think this is a very great uh, 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 opportunity that uh, Vodacom has actually started to create, uh, more especially to the deepest uh, rural areas. People now, they are realizing that uh, now Vodacom, they are practicing their social responsibility. So I think this is well and good. Over the last 10 years, Odocom has given thousands of schools around the country access to ICT. The company's philosophy is to use its technology, infrastructure and expertise to find solutions that will support social and economic development. 
into being a gas and young Sangabism now, filling a gas and even. In the Bangu Long Caesar, my way I would say a phone disease and just constant disdain computer. We since Cal told when I told us all man would I was or gas with seven this. To them a paper and very good Nangana will internet left, told us now, and one hundred was a Caesar or cult in a Singapore phone was a strenuous was popularizing a little phone. Like most villages of this size and location, Mfikweni has hardly any basic utilities. The women in the community walk several times a day to collect water for their families from a central water station in the community. Business owners end their working day as the sun goes down and the school children have never switched on a light or turned on the power of a computer. The school had a computer lab but no computers and Vodacom in keeping with its commitment to giving disadvantaged schools access to technology, provided 60 laptop computers and internet access to be used by the learners in their computer lab. As they started with their program of computers here, you can see now that we are not different from anyone from town. So it's something that uh, we have needed for many years, and now it's here with us. The MV20 project is a pilot. If it works, it could be expanded to other communities around South Africa and perhaps to other countries around the world. This is indeed the best example of technology being put to good use to alleviate poverty, to encourage economic development and to enrich the lives of the people.